So how do you recognize a hemodynamically unstable patient? So there was a nice article published in back in 2009. So clinical assessment of hemodynamically unstable patients. So apart from the, uh, the diagnostic modalities, radiological uh, lab uh, investigations, clinically, how, how can you recognize the patient? What are the signs or symptoms that you would look at? So the signs we usually depend on for assessment of hemodynamics in any patient are the basic tests I'm talking about, that is pulse rate, respiratory rate, uh, the blood pressure and mean arterial pressure, temperature. Uh, there is another uh, aspect of temperature that is toe temperature to ambient temperature gradient. And this is not very commonly used, this toe temperature to ambient temperature gradient. Uh, though we feel the feet and say that the patient's feet are cold and he's shut down peripherally, we use this word as a descriptive word, but not as a numerical. So the gradient I haven't used so far in my clinical practice, but I can, came across this uh, parameter that is toe temperature uh, to the ambient uh, temperature gradient. So this seems to be, a, a, this has given a measure to both the parameters. And again, that is useful. And there are other clinical surrogates for organ perfusion, that is the urine output and capillary refill sign. So in, when it comes to the pulse rate, we all understand that the, usually if there is if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, we expect that the patient's heart rate is on the higher side and it can go as high as 150, 160. Mm -hmm. Even the respiratory rate can be on the higher side unless the patient is towards just prior to the cardiac arrest where both the pulse rate and uh, the respiratory rate are on the lower side. The blood pressure, both systolic blood pressure and mean arterial pressure, of the two, mean arterial pressure is more uh, indicative of um, the hemodynamic status of patient. And temperature, as I said, it can be a, a patient who is hemodynamically unstable can have low temperature, normal temperature, or higher temperature uh, compared to the normal body temperature. And as I described, toe and ambient pressure gradient we have discussed. So we'll discuss the surrogates uh, a little in detail in the next one or two slides. So urine output, um, more than 0.5 ml per kilo per hour is considered adequate. And this has uh, been standardized uh, since 2008 surviving sepsis guidelines. So since till then, we were like, is it one ml? or 0.5 ml per kilo per hour, or sometimes you can wait on zero also for some hours, and you can check for 24 hours and then uh, act on the situation. People used to think this line in these lines, but now we our target is more than 0.5 ml per kilo per hour, and we get alarmed if it is less in an hour, and then we follow the patient for the next two to four hours. And we follow the trends and then we respond to the situation. So, and the other uh, surrogate is clean, capillary refill time. And how do we assess capillary refill time? Uh, it's a three step, five second checkup. You press, the, uh, press your finger on the patient's nail bed for five seconds. And this time you count the numbers loudly. Time, and then uh, patient. Uh, after at the end of five seconds, your patient's nail bed will turn white, and then you release the pressure, and then count the seconds till the patient's nail bed returns pink. If the patient's uh, capillary refill time, that is the time taken to become pink, is more than two seconds, um, um, you are probably dealing with some situation in which needs. A, a, a more attention and if it is more than three seconds definitely it's an alarming sign 
And of late, in the latest surviving sepsis guidelines, capillary refill time has found its place again. And probably in the next um, uh, um, uh, two to four years, we'll be talking more about capillary refill time in our septic patients and shock patients. So capillary refill time, as I said, is defined as the time taken for the distal capillary region uh, to regain its uh, uh, color after pressure and caused blanching. So it was described back in 1947 by Beecher et al. And they have categorized as normal, definite slowing or very sluggish. And these were correlated with the presence, on, presence and severity of shock. And again, this was touched upon by uh, someone called Champion in 1980. And he has included this measurement in his trauma score. And he, it was subsequently endorsed by the American College of Surgeons. And as we all know, it is widely used by emergency physicians and intensive care doctors, both in adults and children. And um, also, this is incorporated in the ACLS guidelines and also ATLS guidelines and useful in cardiopulmonary assessment of critically ill patients. So, um, how so we recognize our uh, hemodynamically unstable patients with the clinical signs, the vital signs, that is pulse rate, heart rate, and then um, blood pressure, mean arterial pressure, temperature, and also the part of temperature I, I explained, that is toe temperature and ambient temperature gradient, and also the surrogates of urinary output and the capillary time.